I'm 12 levels deep into the mines. I've been pretty lucky this run and got a pretty sick combo of relics and items. I am feeling invincible. I'm pretty sure I'm going to curse through the rest of this dungeon easy, even though this is the furthest I've gotten so far. I talk to a priestess and a knight who are guarding a gate. All of a sudden, we are being ambushed by a swarm of insects, but we fight back. The swarm is relentless though, and suddenly I find myself fighting alone. I've been so preoccupied with the enemies that I don't know if my makeshift allies managed to escape or perished. But nevertheless, I am alone against this horde, and suddenly I am not so invincible anymore. I fall to the ground, and I hear all my precious relics and gold scattered to the floor. But Disco, my little pet canary, manages to grab my gold pouch to get to the next adventure. You know, minus taxes, that's how they get ya. Hello everyone, this is Venti from Engage, and today we're gonna take a look at Undermine, a roguelite dungeon crawler very similar to the Binding of Isaac, but instead of demonic babies and tumors, you get a lighter fantasy team. Now, this game came to the Xbox Game Pass last year, and it just now made its debut on the Switch, where, you know, we kinda have a ton of these roguelites already. So aside from the more cheerful mining theme, how does this game manage to stand out? And more importantly, is it worth your time and money? Well, as the great Mr. Rossetti once said, let's check it out. So what is Undermine? Well, this game is a top-down dungeon crawling roguelite, which basically means you will be adventuring through a randomly generated dungeon, going room by room clearing all enemies in order to advance. You will find relics along the way, which will modify your character in some way. This can be simple stat boosts like increasing your melee damage, or something more significant like having your throne pickaxe ricochet between enemies. You also get to have a little pet canary, which follows you around and helps you pick gold, and you'll eventually be able to change it for other familiars with different abilities. There is also this blessing and curse system, which has you balancing between buffs and debuffs for a run, although they do feel way less impactful as they are mostly stat changes. As I said, you will also be finding a lot of gold, you know with the whole mining theme. It's funny, because when gold drops, some slimes will appear and try to steal it. So an explosion from one of your bombs may destroy a node and send gold flying everywhere, and the slimes will come to collect while you're busy fighting other enemies. You will inevitably die, and a portion of your gold will be carried over to your next character, which can be used to buy permanent upgrades for all your future runs. It is a cycle of death, rebirth, and consumerism. You know, just like life is. You can swing your pickaxe or throw it like a boomerang for a ranged attack. However, this is kinda slow, and while it's, well, boomeranging, you won't be able to do anything else, so the combat tends to be much more melee focused than in other entries. You can also jump, which serves as a dodge roll since you'll be avoiding all attacks during the animation, and it also kind of locks you in both momentum and direction. Many people will hate this, but I absolutely love games that do this, I don't know exactly why, but it makes you think a bit more before committing to a jump, and you can still very slightly change the angle, but yeah, it's much better to look at it as a dodge roll for that matter. You will also find bombs scattered throughout the dungeon, which can be used for combat doing AoE damage or to destroy rocks and hazards. There are some elemental effects like fire or electricity, which can interact with things like puddles of water or barrels of oil, which can be used strategically. The enemies you fight are all buried enough, but will all telegraph their attacks, so like many of these games, learning their behavior is key. Between all the relics which may make you switch up your playstyle, the different enemies, hazards and elemental interactions, the combat feels very satisfying. I wouldn't necessarily call it the best in the genre, but it definitely is great. Each dungeon is comprised of randomly arranged rooms, which I think are mostly designed by hand with some minor layout changes like rocks, objects and enemies being randomized. Kind of like Enter the Gungeon, where they mix procedural generation with a more hand designed approach, and I think this is the best way to go as it benefits combat encounters and enables more interesting hazards and secrets. Like I said, most of the rooms will have enemies which you will have to defeat in order to proceed, however, other rooms might house relics, light puzzles, shops, or even rescuable NPCs which can unlock services in the hub world. There is also a boss every 4 levels guarding the way, however, once you defeat it, it won't respawn for future runs. These boss fights are definitely a highlight, so it's kind of a bummer. Although, after beating the game, you will have the option to fight them, but we'll get to that later. Each boss unlocks the next tier of the dungeon, 
and you can use a form of fast travel to start the run on any of these. If you do, you get some random relics and items for you to make up for the ones you would have found. Eventually, you will die, which will have you start with a new peasant in the hub world. But you will keep some of your gold, which your pet familiar will have managed to recover. In the hub world, you will have access to different shops and services depending on the NPCs you have rescued from the dungeon. But here, you'll be able to spend your gold on permanent upgrades for all your future runs, and your thorium, which is more rare and scarce than gold, on relics and blessings, which will unlock them for all future runs, or even on new familiars. The thing is, you're getting progressively stronger each run and with access to much more powerful tools. And that is the core gameplay loop, which is pretty addicting. The pacing feels great as you're always accomplishing something, being unlocking new servers in the hub world, crafting powerful new relics, or getting to a new tier in the dungeon. The controls are fully customizable, which is really good both for accessibility and comfort. You can also adjust the dead zone, which is great if you're having slight drift issues with your controller. So, all in all, for gameplay, I think the game has really satisfying combat with cool elemental interactions, a nice feeling of progression on both character and hub world development, it maybe could have used relics which more drastically change your playstyle. As for the narrative, well, the story isn't very deep. You are a peasant who is sent to the mines by the Archmage to find the source of these mysterious tremors and also search for the missing blacksmith. This being a roguelite means you won't be able to accomplish this on your first run, so after each peasant dies, another one will take its place to continue its efforts. You will eventually accomplish these tasks and be sent further into the mine on other pretenses. However, the funny thing is that few people actually notice that you are a different peasant each time. Many think you are all the same, which gives you this feeling of being expendable, which of course couldn't be further from the truth. The tone of the game is very light and humorous, and it's kinda nice how they justify and merge the roguelike aspect of dying numerous times with expendable peasants. You're not this immortal being on this epic quest, but rather a simple peasant with a truly impossible task, which will not only take your life but of many others just like you. Most of the narrative is conveyed through written dialogue, both through the NPCs you are rescuing and also each time you complete a part of your grand quest, when you will most likely talk to the Archmage and get a grasp of what is the purpose of your task. Like I said, not a very deep story, although it is quite silly and serves as a good backdrop for your actions. As for the visuals, the game goes for a pixelated 16-bit style look. I really liked it! The sprite work is pretty good in both design and animations, and there are some pretty nice details like water reflections or some cool particle effects for the, well, elemental effects. The lightning is also really nice, as there are actually light sources in each room which may be torches, gold or even some enemies. You will find yourself in a situation where the only lightning source in a room is a gold node, so when you mine it, all you can see now are these small nuggets scattered everywhere, and then the slimes come and whisk it away, and you're left in the dark feeling robbed and sad. Hello darkness, my old friend. The UI is pretty basic but effective, but I did have some trouble with the minimap sometimes blocking an item or an enemy, but it's a minor gripe though. Many comparisons will be made between this game and The Binding of Isaac, but I like how they went for the more lighthearted fantasy aesthetic for this one, as it fits with a more silly nature, whereas Isaac can be too dark for some. The sound design is pretty good too. The sound of an arrow flying towards you because you trigger the trap, or your boots hitting a puddle after a jump, all small details but make up for an overall more immersive experience. As for the music, I really enjoyed it, but I can't say it's the best out there. It's good, but it's nowhere as memorable as, say, Crypt of the Necrodancer or Rogue Legacy. As for the performance, the game appears to run at a smooth 60fps both docked and undocked most of the time, but I did notice some minor dips in performance, but these were few and far between. This mostly happened where more than 5 or 6 bumps were going off at the same time, and in my first like 30 or so hours of playtime, this must have happened like once or twice, nothing significant. So yeah, this is a pretty well performing game, with a beautiful 16-bit art style and some pretty good sound design. The game is 20 US dollars or your local equivalent, it is also the same price on Xbox and PC, so we got no switch tax here. There are 5 main zones, each with 4 floors, some extra secret locations and around 9 boss battles. 
so a full run can take you well over an hour. There are also hundreds of items for you to discover, which all register to your journal, which will keep track of these as well as enemies you encounter, and it even has its own little achievement system. The site How Long To Beat estimates that it takes around 20 hours to beat this game, although I got my first main clear at around the 15 hour mark. After you beat the game, you will unlock Other Mine, an extra endgame mode where you can fight your way through the dungeon without any of the permanent upgrades you've unlocked. You will only have what you find on that run at your disposal. In this mode, you will have to fight the bosses again, which I think it's great. So yeah, I believe this is a good price for a great deal of content, but it also needs to be said that this has some very good competition at a similar price. Overall, Undermine scores an 8.6 out of 10. So I really enjoyed Undermine. Now, I know many of you will be sick of these roguelites by now since we have had so many on the Switch already and this game doesn't do anything that much differently for it to change your mind. What it does, however, is execute on those concepts in an excellent way. The combat feels satisfying, the gameplay loop is very addictive, the pacing is good, the visuals and art style are all great. So if you're already into the genre or are one of the few people who haven't tried it yet, I would definitely recommend this game as it's one of the best in its class. So that was my review of Undermine, guys. I had a lot of fun making it, so I hope you found it useful. Do let me know down in the comments if you're planning on picking this up or maybe you just had enough of roguelites on the Switch. I will be uploading more content to the channel, so if you're ever interested, you know, maybe subscribe, just saying. I really appreciate you sticking till the very end of the video. I hope you have a fantastic day and remember guys, stay engaged.